what do we have, man? What 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 is this dude? Who is this shrinking man? What do you, what do you got on him, dude? I don't know, some kind of a deep sea diver, like a like a Seiko Tuna 031. So what do we got? It's uh, January 4th, and uh, I weigh 236 pounds. That's nine pounds less than I weighed on December 18th. I haven't had any sugar since then. I had one cheat day, and on that cheat day, I ate some uh, dry salami with cheese. And uh, I still lost weight. I mean, this, you know, shouldn't be eating that. That's not very good for me. But uh, I'm trying to eat clean. Uh, kind of like it. I like eating clean. Uh, man, I feel a lot better. Uh, ooh, the, the pain in my foot has gone down about 90%. I feel lighter. My stomach feels smaller. This has to continue. I want to get under 2, about 199. I have to get all my watches readjusted. But I promise I won't be one of those uh, nutrition evangelists who uh, self-righteously uh, tell everyone to uh, get with the program. So uh, that's the situation, fighting a cold, got some laundry baskets in the background, forgive me for forgetting to get them out of the way. The girls are at gymnastics, and they had the week off with me. It's been a brutal week, man. Me alone with my twin daughters, man, breaking up fights, breaking up a lot of fights this week. Fighting a cold, I got laundry baskets in the background, but uh, here's the situation, man. I want to talk about the 10 reasons you fall out of love with a holy grail watch. I haven't fallen out of love with this bad boy. I probably should, but I just can't. I can't fall out of love with it. So uh, let's look at the 10 reasons why, you know, you obsessed over a watch, you invested a lot of money in it, you might have even sold several watches to fund it, and you fell out of love with a watch. Let's look at the 10 reasons why you fall out of love with usually a holy grail watch. I think the number one reason that uh, people would fall out of love with a Holy Grail watch was that there were unrealistic expectations uh, in the watch. And uh, as I thought of that, I thought of an 11th reason. I hope I can remember the 11th. Well, I better just say it right now because I'll forget. I wrote 10, and 11th came to me. There was a watch that had been a grail of mine for a few years, the Seiko MM300. I think it's the SBDX017. They cost about $2,000. And um, in this case, the, the image, the way it looked online, uh, there was a disparity between that and, um, and what you actually got. And uh, I found that that watch, the, the, uh, the dial was just too small. The bezel was so, it looked like a, like a, I don't know, like a real tiny dial on my wrist. It was thick. And it looked good on uh, a gentleman who came over and bought it the day I made a video about how I didn't want it. A, a gentleman came to my house, man. He was 45 minutes away, and he had a six-inch wrist. And it looked fine on him. But sometimes, and so this whole video, I have to change it now. Now it's 11 reasons uh, why you fall out of love with the grail. Because I forgot about the disparity between the image that you uh, coveted online and then what, how it actually looked in person and, and how it actually played on your wrist in person. So uh, now this is 11 reasons. Lord have mercy on my soul. So let's go back to the original list. All right. So um, a lot of times the Holy Grail, uh, this will be number two now. This is number two. It was going to be number one. Now it's number two. This just happens, man. So number two. Um, you have unrealistic expectations. Um, you get the watch and you put it on. Have you ever worn a watch? You went to a family function, a party, and you're just rocking this watch. You're just looking up. I'm so nonchalant, waiting for a comment on my new watch, and nothing goes on, man. No one says a word to you. You're just ignored. I'm just a loser, man. Oh, I hate my life. <clears throat> I've been to family function, weekend functions, uh, and uh, I uh, had no one comment on the watch for five days. It's ridiculous, man. So, you know, you had these unrealistic expectations. Uh, you got the watch. You wanted people to come up to you and think you were James Bond or think you were uh, from some Born Identity movie or something. Uh, you thought you were going to get an invitation uh, to, to Buckingham Palace or someone want to do a photo spread on your house for town and country. Or, uh, you know, 
You put the watch on. Where's Barbara Eden coming out of the genie bottle from I Dream a Genie? Man, that Barbara Eden changed my life. I think I was six years old, and I saw Barbara Eden on TV, and I asked my dad, who is this woman? Where did she come from? I think I like her. My father just said, oh boy, we're in trouble. So uh, that would be number two. Unrealistic expectations. You're expecting too much from your grail. You know, if you really want to change your life, don't buy a grail watch. Work out. <laughs> Read a book. <clears throat> it's not going to change your life. It's not going to... Don't put those unrealistic expectations on your watch. Number three, um, your taste change. You might have gone from uh, liking tool divers to suddenly, no, I don't want a tool diver. I want an elegant leather wristband with a Seiko cocktail. I want a business. That's my new grail, man. I got to get rid of this. I got too much tool going on in my watch collection, man. What is wrong with me? So you change your taste. That happens. Uh, number three, you don't bond with a watch. You, you, you neglect it, man. You haven't worn it in like three months. And now it's like this needy, unwanted thing in your watch box. And you resent its neediness. And you sell it. And you know what's crazy? After you sell it, you want it back. It's your fault because you didn't bond with it. You didn't bond with a dang thing, and now you got to get it back. And that kind of brings us to the next, uh, the next one, number five. You can only love the watch when you don't own it. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had a uh, a watch? You had to sell it, and that was the only way you could like it. What is what is the adage? Absence makes the uh, the heart grow fonder. Is that what it is? So. Uh, that would be uh, a motivation or, or a cause of uh, falling out of love with Holy Grail Watch. Number six, you once had this appetite for what I call a Flava Flav watch, a colossal, oversized, blinged out Las Vegas watch. They sell these watches on television. You might have heard me talk about these watches uh, sometime. I'm not going to talk about the brands or the brand, but, uh, you know, you know, you just can't wear these anymore. They're they're an atrocity, and uh, you need to go midsize. I'm, you know, it's pretty uh, pretty small for me. I mean, it's stated to be forty eight millimeters, but um, in actuality, it's a forty five. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's forty five millimeters. I don't know why they keep saying it's forty eight, forty seven point five. It's all nonsense. All right, number seven. Um. The watch is a, is a lemon. It's just difficult. It's not keeping accurate time. It's got lousy loom. It's always in the shop. Who wants that thing, man? It's a nightmare. Ended up being a high-maintenance situation. Ended up creating more headaches than anything. And uh, so, uh, you know, I don't think I've had a watch like that. But but I did have a, a Citizen Atessa. I couldn't, I couldn't set it. I didn't know how to read the instructions, man. That was a bummer. That was a buzzkill. I, I, I'm fairly literate. I can try to follow instructions. Have mercy on us all. Um, number eight. This is interesting. Sometimes a watch hurts. It hurts to wear it. So one of the most beautiful watches I've ever owned, especially at this price point, the Seiko Kinetic Diver SUN019. Um, I'm sure many of you, most of you know what this watch is all about. So it's, it's a big Seiko. It's about 48 uh, millimeters. It's got sapphire. It's kinetic, which I, I don't like. Honestly, I probably would have kept it. It wasn't even the kinetic that drove me crazy, even though, let's be honest, kinetic does drive me crazy. It was the, uh, the crown, the way that that watch sat on my wrist and the way it moved on, on my wrist it dug a hole into my hand. It, it, the friction was constant. It would just dig, 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 like a dog, man, digging, digging up its bone, man. It would get raw. I remember a professor from Cal Berkeley in the 1980s. I was working at a wine store in Berkeley. He was telling me about constant friction, like if you have keys that you wear in your pocket and they rub against your leg. He said it, it made you um, at higher uh, risk for cancer in that area. You know, you're irritating that area. And uh, you know what? I think there's something to be said about that. Do some uh, online research on that. And uh, so uh, 
bottom line is, um, number one, the kinetic Seiko was greedy for, for wrist time because it's kinetic. You have to keep it moving. Number two, it was digging a hole into my hand. And uh, no matter what level, you know, I had, I had the, uh, the bracelet tighter, looser. I just couldn't get it to stop uh, making a little hole in my hand. It was, it was horrible. So, um, you know, the watch has to feel good on the wrist. All right, let's go up to number nine. Everyone's wearing the watch. You, you go somewhere and everyone's wearing that watch. It's not your watch anymore. Everyone's wearing it. So um, I had a beautiful watch. Uh, I sold it. It was. Uh, you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. I shouldn't even tell you this, but I don't care. You guys are smart. You're gonna smell any BS anyway. I had a, a very beautiful watch. Kind of miss it, but I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, it was a Seiko Grand Touring Sport. It was blue dial. Really classy watch. And the owner of the watch store I go to, he had one. And he was wearing it. It didn't feel like it was mine anymore. Dude, you're wearing it. It's yours. I sold it. And uh, I don't know. I don't like having a watch that someone locally is wearing around. Uh-uh. No way. So uh fell out of love with that bad boy. Um... So, you know, everyone's wearing the watch. You don't feel special anymore. Uh, number 10, you develop a bad association with a watch. You got in a big fight with your girlfriend. You had a horrible breakup. You got in a car accident wearing that watch. Your boss screamed at you at work while you're wearing that watch. And now this watch that you once loved has got bad mojo, man. You got to get it out of your life. And so uh, number 11. This is going to be something that uh, you've all done. You know why you fell out of love with your Grail watch? Because you found a new Grail. That's why. And uh, I think a lot of you will identify with this. A lot of you will will um, know that you're more in love with falling in love with a Grail than you are with actually owning a watch. That's part of the, oh, the sickness, the mental illness, the watch addiction. And uh, that becomes part of the... Uh, the syndrome, the cycle that you're lost in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so thankful I was able to do this presentation. Having a cold, I thought my voice was going to go crazy any second, but uh, I survived it. And uh, there's a couple watches I'm uh, going to have to get in the next year, I think. Well, there's one that I really have to get. I have to get it. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. You know what I'm talking about. It's the Seiko Black Turtle, the Ninja SRPC49, I believe. SRPC49. Uh, I, I think I may have to get that watch. I think it's, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's not for sale yet. I think it's going to be sale, for sale in the next three weeks or so. I think it's going to cost 600 bucks, man. That's going to hurt. Ooh, ow. And uh, I've been looking at that watch, man. You get that's my new Grail, man. I'm afraid if I get it though, I won't wear any of my other watches. That, what is this going to be an exit watch? Whoa! Check out that Seiko uh, Black Turtle. So uh, what, what, do, what, what do we got here? What are you two thirty six? When are you going to be two twenty five, McMahon? When are you going to be down to a thirty six jean, dude? I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm just trying to. To make up for all my indulgence, all my indulgent living, man. I'm trying to show some discipline around here. All right? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I am out.